morning folks uh, this is tony mitra and this is uh, uh, one of my last updates on this petition uh, today is 25th of uh, april and uh, day after tomorrow i'm going to see minister carla qualtro uh, at which time i'll hand over all this de documentation of this petition to her uh, to take to uh, ottawa and hand it over to the minister of health asking for the safety data of glyphosate to be disclosed to the canadian citizens now today i have three items basically to talk to you about. First is uh, the UN Convention on uh, Biodiversity and within it the Cartagena Protocol on Biosafety. Second is a related uh, site called Biosafety Scanner uh, which is again uh, an international body keeping track of uh, GM crops uh, broken down into country and regions and so on. Biosafety Scanner. And the third one is uh, <coughs> Another United Nations uh, organization called FAO, Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, uh, and it's a GM Foods Platform, another site which gives you a lot of detail of what's happening with indiv individual countries with regard to all kinds of uh, GMO products that are registered and where it is registered, what it does, which countries uh, have approved it, and, and so on. So these are the three that I shall cover today. So the first is uh, UN Convention on Biological Diversity or Biodiversity in short. Uh, this uh, has a long history starting with uh, 1971, sorry 72, when Sweden and India got together in Stockholm uh, in presence of uh, 130 delegates from different countries uh, to propose a convention on environment. Now fast forward 20 years or so. Eventually enough countries got interested to preserve their biodiversity uh, one, one way or another and uh, there were enough people to sign into it and start collectively writing down the basic guidelines that would form the backbone of this uh, convention. So in 1993 enough countries showed an interest uh, to implement it and when the number of countries interested reached a threshold point this became an existing convention that was 1993 along with its first protocol uh, first detail that was called the Cartagena Proto protocol and Cartagena protocol was about biosafety within biodiversity preservation and that biosafety was a guideline for countries to make country specific laws that would protect its biological diversity from inadver inadvertent or, or intentional whatever damage through introduction of LMO which is living modified organisms its United Nations way of uh, identifying what we know as GMO. Now let's get some of the dates fixed here. The convention on biodiversity came into effect in 1993 December when Jean Chrétien uh, was the Prime Minister in Canada. Uh, and the protocol, the Cartagena protocol to protect ourselves from GMO, LMO as they call it, uh, that came into force when enough countries uh, signed into it, showed interest in it. It was adopted on the 29th of January 2000 as a supplementary agreement to the Convention on Biological Diversity and entered into force on 11 September 2003. So who all signed it? Canada was one of them. USA never signed it. They didn't want to protect their biodiversity. But Canada did. Now when the convention itself came into force in December, late December 1993, Canada's Prime Minister was Jean Chrétien uh, from Quebec. And uh, whether he was personally involved, I don't know. But what happened is Canada was so gung-ho about it, just so supportive about it, that they offered to host the head office of this uh, of this convention and this protocol, there would be a need to have a separate office that would collect all the data coming from hundreds of countries of all the meetings they are having, all the particular laws they are passing and if there is any dispute and if there is any uh, need for resolution, blah, blah, blah. All these details had to be collected and, mani and maintained and, and, and countries to be corresponded with. So this head office, they, they needed a head office for that and Canada offered to hold this head office in Quebec which is why I was wondering whether Jean uh, Chrétien had some personal uh, involvement in it and the office today exists in Montreal. However, that was 1993. Having signed 
Canada never ratified it. Canada never went ahead and to take the next step, which is to make Canada specific laws that that, that writing down of that text of the law is still in draft form in 25 years. And they have, Canada has moved 180 degrees up away from it. They wouldn't like to touch it with a 10 foot pole. And existing institutions don't want to have anything to do with Cartagena Protocol. They would not like to see Canadian biodiversity protected. And as a result, our biodiversity is being destroyed, being stolen, being pirated right under our feet without our knowledge. And this, this head office sitting in Montreal, which happens to be the constituency of our own current Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau, and this secretarial office of uh, Cartagena protocol unfortunately is like a stepchild that is that no that Canada does not want they are holding this detail how many other countries have become signatories 170 any country that you possibly can name is already a party to it they have passed country specific laws and they have implemented it except Canada USA Australia and also Argentina all the other countries that you can name have already come on board. Russia too did not sign it, but Russia went ahead than the rest of us. They want to turn their entire country organic and they, and they want to stop uh, importing what little uh, um, crops they were importing that were contaminated with GMO or they were GMO. So anyway, so this is the uh, background and there is a side story to it. And that is a uh, country like India passed an India specific law named Biodiversity Preservation Act of India of 2002 and it said among other things that all living organisms existing in India whether naturally occurring or through man's involvement in, in hybridization and selective breeding are intellectual property of the Union of India and no entity, no corporation, no country can study the genome of any of it or tinker with it or create a commercial product out of it and try to patent it without express permission of the government of India. If they violate this law, they are likely to be sued. Now, <clears throat> that was 2003. In 2010, Monsanto tries to introduce the first GM food crop in India, an eggplant called Bt Brinjal. There was a huge human cry and public protest from, uh, from the citizens, from the farming, farmer uh, unions, as well as on the scientific front and the legal front and the government put a moratorium on it and that put a halt to it for the next uh, so many years. But uh, but while all this was going on, there was another NGO, Environment Support Group of Bangalore, whose leader, Mr. Leo Saldana, found out that Monsanto and its partner had essentially violated this uh, 2003's uh, rule, a law or act called Biodiversity Preservation Act of India. And uh, in 2010, they introduced this by actually uh, designing this GM product by uh, studying the genome of Indian eggplants and then tinkering with it and then creating this, uh, this uh, particular GM crop variety without asking government of India's permission, without obtaining uh, their permission. Therefore, they had violated this law and therefore, according to the uh, wording of this law, it should now be the duty of the government of India to sue Monsanto for biopiracy. So this gentleman took the government of India to court and provided the evidence which was all over the place because this work was being done by Monsanto and his partner using Indian universities. So the evidence was placed with them. Uh, he won the case, government of India lost the case and, and it cannot be appealed any higher. And uh, the government of India has been ordered to sue Monsanto for biopiracy and the government is proceeding with that, although it would rather prefer to be in the same bed with uh, Monsanto. So this, I'm, I'm telling you all this is because this goes to show the power of this uh, convention and this protocol, which Canada shamefully 25 years since uh, they signed into it, never wrote a law and never ratified it. And, and our biodiversity is being destroyed and stolen from under our feet. And Canadians don't even know it because our mainstream media will not cover it. Our government will not talk about it. So that is the issue of Cartagena Protocol and uh, United Nations Convention on Biological Diversity. Next item on my plate today is Biosafety Scanner. You can uh, go to this. This is also a website and you can go there 
uh, its uh, address is en.biosafetyscanner.org. It will be there in text form in the petition. And basically, it's another site that gives you a lot of information about uh, about uh, GM, uh, gen genetically modified food, etc. It will give you a thematic map to show, for instance, uh, worldwide how many countries, uh, which country is uh, is at what state with regard to signing of the Cartagena Protocol, and you can see that. Uh, most of the world is uh, already gone ahead and, and, and USA and Canada uh, particularly stands out as rogue nations more or less. That's my uh, way of interpreting the situation. And then you can also go and see uh, the labeling map. It's a mandatory requirement for most of the world, not in USA and Canada. Uh, you can see map of approved crops and you can uh, click uh, nation by nation. For instance, you can click uh, under Canada and see how many uh, crops uh, are, are allowed to have genetic variants and uh, starting from alfalfa, canola, cotton, flax, maize, blah, blah, blah. And then you can click each of them to see how many different kinds of uh, strains, uh, you know, GM this type, GM that type under each, you know, alfalfa has got so many or canola or cotton and so on. And, and then you can go on to check uh, other maps, for instance, uh, the total approved events, and then you can see there are some countries that do not allow any GM crop to be imported or even grown. And then uh, not many countries like the Greenland, Iceland, you know, there's a country called Nicaragua in Central America, the only one I can find uh, that doesn't allow it. Maybe we should all go and settle down in Nicaragua. But on the other end of the scale, the worst countries in the entire planet are USA and Canada who have more than 100 GM products approved, more than 100. Now, and you can, of course, uh, click on them and you can also go through all, all, all of that. And alfalfa has got two and canola has got huge number, maybe 20 or 30, I don't know how many. Cotton has got huge number. Maize has an unbelievably long, maybe 100 types, I don't know how many, all GM. Papaya, there are two. They don't, India, uh, Canada doesn't grow papaya, but they will still import, they have approved. Uh, uh, two kinds of papaya uh, that can be that is genetically modified and can be uh, brought in and uh, if you click on one of them and then uh, go see the, the the results and then you can see who did it and and you eventually come to see that health canada has approved it and blah 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 you know so this is about biosafety scanner and a very uh, very powerful tool for you to uh, go through to be aware how bad we are in Canada. Uh, that's that's the main reason I'm I'm uh, actually mentioning all this. And then you can download PDF files. You, you can see the consensus document on biology of papaya, uh, the the GM papaya that is uh, that is uh, being uh, promoted. And then all these documents, selectively uh, good documents that says this is good, and and selectively. Uh, removing document that says that you should stay away from it and uh, and so on lots of lots of detail you know then the last one that that was the second item the last one is about uh, the what do you call uh, FAO site that is uh, uh, United Nations uh, another organization food and agriculture organization of United Nations and that list all the uh, all the for instance uh, uh, countries that have approved uh, uh, GM products and they, they, let's say if you choose Canada you can select by country you know if you choose Canada then uh, then uh, you can uh, go through this long list of all the products including let's say this one uh, one called uh, sugar beet and you can see that uh, that how many countries have approved this particular variety and there is it's called glyphosate tolerant sugar beet the european union has got one and then there is a uh, australia and then there is canada and you know alphabetically goes on japan philippines united states of usa these are the few countries that al allow this glyphosate tolerant uh, seed and uh, and which are the parties <coughs> uh, which are in, in included in it and what are the methods of uh, detection uh, in different countries and uh, and uh, also what Canada has to say and uh, it is used in food as well as feed that means it is human food as well as animal feed uh, and and so on you know so this this is another very powerful tool where everything uh, 
uh, approved in Canada, any country, but if you choose Canada, then everything approved there can be uh, looked at at great detail and you can actually find out uh, what each of them is good for and uh, what each of them uh, is supposed to be uh, bad for and uh, and who is uh, doing the testing. Of course, there's no testing done by, uh, by Health Canada. They just approve it and they will not allow you to look at the safety detail of this, safety test detail of it. If you click the relevant link, uh, one of the links will say novel food decision. If you click on it, it will directly take you to Health Canada page about this particular uh, product. And then you can print it, you can read it in introduction, product information, blah, blah, blah. But most important decision you will not see. That is, uh, lay your hands on the safety data. Health Canada's review of the information presented in support of the food use of insecticide resistant cotton event in 15985 concludes that the use of, of cotton seed oil from this cotton does not raise concern related to safety, blah, 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 blah. So this is uh, the third I needed to cover. It's already, I've taken 40 minutes. I don't intend to take more. The main issue is like this. Canada and USA are among the worst, the very worst places you know, when we are being literally sinking under an avalanche of uh, bad decisions, bad approvals, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call violation of uh, of uh, uh, citizens' rights to see safety documents, uh, keeping information away from the people, and uh, and letting our biological diver uh, diversity being uh, pirated from under our feet. Uh, by successive layers, uh, successive phases of our government. Uh, it is good to ask whether we have a functioning democracy or we don't, or what is the definition of that democracy? Is it is it a rule by this foreign corporation or, 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 or a government by the people and for the people? This is very important and Canadians do not know, for instance, that Cartagena protocol, what it is, or biodiversity uh, uh, preservation, what it is or that the head office is actually in Montreal, Quebec. It is in the same constituency uh, from where our Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has risen to power or got elected. And uh, it should be our duty uh, to inform the Prime Minister to do the right thing and join 170 other countries and ratify this convention. Of course, there'll be tremendous pressure against it. The, the, the agro industry will, and the farmers union up in arms, we have to fight them. It is, the Canada is for the Canadian people and not just, you know, uh, 250 industrial farmers and, and 25 corporations. Uh, this is 35 million people. So anyway, I don't know what else to do except try to raise awareness on this. Most Canadians do not know that this is, this is happening and this, this convention is there, this protocol is there, the head office is in Montreal and in, in our mainstream media will not cover it, government will not talk about it, nobody knows and, and therefore nobody does anything about it. Anyway, I, I did what I did and my time is up. So uh, take care folks and uh, maybe I'll have another update in a few days. And if you all are interested to do something about it, about this Cartagena protocol, about uh, Canada so shamefully staying outside, uh, well, let us know what do you think we should do. And that's it. Uh, it's almost 20 minutes. My time is up. I got things to do. So bye bye for now.